I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend. Anyway, what I want to talk about today are the dangers of losing weight too quickly. It's about time people woke up to the dangers of this. Because while everyone likes to look good on Instagram and social media, you don't know what's going inside of their systems. You don't know how many people who have lost weight too quickly are today going through hair transplants. They have kidney issues. They have liver issues. They have heart issues. They have an emotional issue, a mental problem because of their fear of putting the weight back on again. Every time you see those lose seven pounds in seven days or lose 10 kilos in two weeks or, you know, drop two sizes in 14 days, those are exactly the kind of plans and programs you want to stay away from. Because number one, it's not scientifically possible. Yep, you can lose water, you can lose muscle mass, you can lose bone density, but what about fat? And second, ask yourself the simplest question before you get onto any quick weight loss or fat uh, plan. Ask yourself this, if it worked, wouldn't everyone be doing it? And wouldn't everyone be thin or slim or have fantastic bodies? If it worked, everyone would, right? But why is weight loss still the most Googled word? Why are people still chasing ways and methods and diet plans and exercise regimes to lose weight? Because it doesn't work. People are destroying their health in the name of weight loss. The world has become such that so many people lose weight if you want. Everyone wants to look good. I like to be fit because I look good. I feel I look good. I like to look good. And that's it. That's the intention. I'm not doing it to impress other people or impress society. It's because I feel good. The problem is when your intention for weight loss is a wedding that you have three months down the line or because your friends are laughing at you, that's when you're going to make attempt to find all of the quick fixes because you want to be appreciated. Your self-worth is so low that you desperately try anything and everything to lose that weight. Okay, fine. You've started a weight loss plan. Maybe instead of three months, it's going to take six months if you do it the right way. What's going to happen in six months? What's going to happen? Are you going to lose your friends? Are you going to lose your partner? If the answer is yes, they're worth losing. If the answer is no, why are you destroying your body? Now, let me tell you some of the dangers. There are people uh, dying because of weight loss gone wrong. And I don't want to mention names, but it's happening all around us. Silent cardiac arrests, liver failures, multi-organ failures. In fact, go back to all the biggest loser competitions. Track where those people are today. There's documented signs showing that all of these people have put their weight back on. Why? They lost weight. To make the television show look good, they lost weight. But why has it come back onto them? Because there were non-sustainable ways that were used. And that's what's happening with everyone today. They lose weight, they put it back. They lose weight, they put it back. Now that is bad for the human body. It's bad for all of your vital organs. You can't be yo-yoing between weight loss and weight gain and weight loss and weight gain. And then you start to have a hormonal imbalance. And once you have a hormonal imbalance, you have bigger problems than losing weight. You have stubborn fat. You have mood swings, you have falling hair, you have poor skin, you start losing pigmentation in skin, you start having little aches and pains all over your body, you lose your libido, like everything changes. Just to fit into a dress or a t-shirt or a pair of pants, you lose all the other joys off living life. And that's why a lot of people who lose that weight in desperation are unhappy people. They're emotionally stressed out people. You look at them at parties, they always have this serious look on their face and you know, all of that stuff. You gotta be happy. If you're losing the weight right, the right way, you're feeling good, you should be happy, you should be celebrating. You shouldn't be this person with a serious, haggard looking face all the time in life. It's not working for you. Well, let's get straight into the dangers. Number one, when you go on these fad diets or plans that promise you quick weight loss, you miss out on key nutrients because most of these fat, fat programs will knock off a complete macro from your diet. It will move out complete food groups, like stop eating fruits, stop doing this, stop doing that. If that worked, then everyone eating fruit should be fat, but they're not. Everyone eating all the food groups should be fat, but all of them are not. So you always gotta reflect, what are you doing wrong? And when you knock off a macro or a food group, you are now deficient in nutrients. Let's take the example of someone being a vegan. No problem with that. Be a vegan. But are you making sure that you're getting your calcium from other sources? Be a carnivore. Are you getting fiber from your other sources? Okay, go on a low carb diet, but are you getting 
all the nutrition in terms of micronutrients that your brain, your heart, your liver, your kidney needs. While you're chasing weight loss, I would love for you to follow the lives of people who have lost weight the fast way. Just follow their lives or look in your own friend groups and stuff and see how long does it remain. We don't look at that. We don't learn from that. And these people are nutritionally deficient. You're lacking B vitamins, which are required for every function in the human body. Your calcium levels fall. Your vitamin D3 levels fall. Your iron levels fall. Now you have a hormonal imbalance. So all of a sudden, your thyroid gets worse or your diabetes actually gets worse instead of getting better. When you're nutrient deficient, what are some of the signs? You have a decrease in energy. You have constant fatigue, brittle hair. Your hair starts to dry up and fall. So now you're on a weight loss plan and now you've got to be on a hair loss plan as well. You're pumping yourself with steroids, you're doing hair patches in your head, you're changing 50 shampoos, you're doing biotin extracts, where the, the whole problem is you're not getting in these basic nutrients because you're doing a diet that deprives you of that. Then your skin starts to change, you lose elasticity of your skin, so your nutritionist put collagen in. So while you're trying to lose weight, you're losing elasticity, so you're just putting collagen in. And you blame allopathy saying it's treating the symptoms. Most weight loss plans also just treat your symptoms without looking at the root cause of the problem. So a lot of people lose weight, they also lose muscle, so now they look like a bag of bones and they look older. And people are, what are you doing? You're looking sick, you're looking tired, you're looking haggard. That's not the right way to lose weight. When you lose weight the right way, your skin should glow. Your hair should be better. You should be stronger. There should be a glow from your face. You should look more toned. You should not look thin. You should look toned because you are building muscle. Otherwise, what are the fat diet plans doing for you? Flushing out water from your system by cutting out your carbs? You cut out carbs today, your water intake, you, you, you look flatter tomorrow. Because the more carbs you have, the more water it retains in your body. Carbs require water. They absorb water into your system. So now you're nutrient deficient. You have hair loss, you have a compromised immune system. Your immune system is compromised and that's why people in their 30s today have weakened bones and osteoporosis. Shameful. People in their 30s, osteoporosis, men and women. Osteoporosis because you're nutrient deficient. Now you try to go onto another fad which is low carb. Low carb, if done the right way, is beautiful. But when you go low, low carb or no carb, can you tell me how you're getting all the other nutrients that you require? If you're getting it, good. Then you should not just be losing weight, you should be losing fat. That's your indicator that your low carb diet is working. A lot of professionals say, oh, first you lose water and then you lose and then we'll put it on. No, it's not supposed to be that way. You should be losing fat and putting on muscle. That's when you know your plan is successful for you. So when you go low, low carb, now another thing that happens, your metabolism slows down. Because I'll tell you right now, your subconscious mind doesn't care about your weight loss goal. Your conscious mind cares about it. Your subconscious mind only cares about survival. What does this body need to survive? So the moment your food intake falls, because now you're trying to starve yourself, Fasting and starvation are very, very different and you gotta have the wisdom to know the difference between that. So when you start starving yourself, your body through your thyroid gland will start regulating your metabolism. It doesn't care about what that number on the scale is or how happy or sad you are. If the fuel comes down, it slows down your metabolism because it tries to conserve energy. So it does that by making you tired so that you don't move, by making you fatigued so that you don't expend energy because it's trying to hold on energy until you feed your body the next time. So all of these diets, why do people put on weight? Because now they lost it, but the moment they stop it, they've not trained their metabolism. Their metabolic rate is crippled. And that's why they start to put on more weight than they lost. And that's a whole indicator that your diet plan was wrong for you. Your lifestyle was completely wrong for you. So your metabolism gets slower and your body starts to hang on to more fat, period. That's controlled by leptin. Leptin needs a certain amount of fat in the human body. So when you're doing it the right way, like when bodybuilders do it the right way, sports athletes do it the right way, there's a certain science called deep cellular nutrition that goes into their plans. While they're cutting out a macro, you're making sure they're getting everything else either through supplements or more fibers and more vegetables and more berries. It's very personalized, but everyone else thinks they can just do that and that's why no one's succeeding. And everyone needs an extreme to lose weight. You don't need an extreme to lose weight. You need the fundamentals with discipline and consistency. It's as simple as that. So when you go low, low carb, your body moves into starvation mode. 
And when you move to starvation mode, your body is only going to hang on to fat. And that's why you get more and more frustrated because you say, I'm doing everything. I'm low carb and yet I'm putting weight on and I'm not losing that fat. And then your trainer said, okay, man, let's tone up and burn that fat. You can't. You can't do that unless you allow the body to stop clinging on to it. Now, another thing that happens when people go into calorie deficiency, which is the right way to lose weight, but you, don't, you just don't suddenly drop from 3,000 calories to 500 calories or 800 calories or 1,000 calories. You start off by decreasing to 200 calories, then 400, and then 500, and you stay within 500 and you add more exercise. So you create a bigger deficit. If I can burn 500 calories in my workout and I can reduce my calories by 500, I have a deficit of 1,000 calories in a week. I'm going to notice my fat percentage start to fall. As simple as that. As simple as that. But when you try to drop your calories too fast, that's what happens to the human body. It goes into stress mode. When you're in stress mode, your body doesn't care about losing weight. It's only looking at holding on to energy, which is fat. So you've got to be careful of that. Most of the fat diets, you notice people lose muscle first. That is not the right plan if you're losing muscle. Because muscle burns fat. You need muscle as a fundamental to burn fat. You can't be reliant only on a diet and exercise. The more muscle or muscle tone you have, the faster your metabolic rate is and the easier it is to burn belly fat, abdominal fat, back fat, thigh fat, face fat, whatever fat it is that you're trying to lose. But on the fat diet, you lose water, you lose muscle, you don't lose fat, you lose bone density and you lose your mind eventually because it is psychosomatically disturbing. You're doing everything, but yet you're not losing weight or you're losing weight and you're happy and now you start to put it back on and you're sad. So it psychosomatically messes you up and now you have an emotional mood swing problem, which in turn increases your estrogen, decreases your testosterone and you have more abdominal fat. That's how it works. The second thing, dehydration. Because you go on these low carb diets or these fat diets, a lot of people don't look at their water intake and they're dehydrated. When you're dehydrated, your body, will, your body will actually retain more water. It wants to store more water for all of its functions. But its vital organs, like I said, it doesn't care about what your goal is. It cares about survival. Now, what happens when you're dehydrated? Huge problems, because 70 to 80% of your cells live and need water, which means you upset not just the metabolism of your body, but the vital functioning of every single organ, your heart, your brain, everything else. So you get dehydrated because now you're low carb and you're very, very low carb. You're not holding on to water. So while I said you can do low carb but the right way, are you changing your water intake? Are you increasing your water intake? All of those things are so important. What are the stages of your day that you're consuming water? How long are you dehydrated? So when you're dehydrated, what are some of the signs of you being dehydrated? Number one, constipation. There's no point being healthy and fit with a great body if you're constipated. And I will tell you, one in two people are constipated today. They have great bodies. They say, Luke, I'm strong. I got muscles. Someone say, I dropped five sizes. I'm this size. I'm constipated. Oh, you're not healthy. You're not fit in any way if you're constipated. You're holding trash in your body. You are no way healthy and fit. You may look it, but you are not healthy and fit, period. Change your mindset. So some of the signs of dehydration, constipation, headaches, stimulating migraines, muscle cramping in your calf muscles, everyone else. I have people on fat diets who go to a rheumatoid arthritis doctor to say, I got pains. And the doctor calls me up because we share similar patients. And he says, look, just get them to eat a little more food. You know, just get them to eat more food. They're deficient in magnesium. They're dehydrated and all of that stuff. But yet people are looking for complication where the simplicity is in what is right in front of you. You have low energy when you're dehydrated. Your urine is a very, very dark yellow amber color. You have constant feelings of irritability. All the time you're irritable, you're snapping and all of those problems. The next point, when you try to lose weight too quickly, you get ravenous. You feel so hungry and then you end up binging. And that's what causes more emotional disturbance because you've tried, you've reached the end of the day. And you're on a 500 calorie diet. You're struggling and at the end of the day, you break loose and you eat a whole tub of ice cream or a whole bar of chocolate or a whole bag of chips and now you're guilty and now you're sad and all of these problems happen. Why does that happen? Because you lack willpower? No, you messed up your hormones. Leptin is a satiety hormone. When it is out of balance because your fat percentage is constantly changing, leptin can actually do the opposite. It can make you more hungry. And that's why even when you want to feel in control, you will lose it and eat and overeat and binge eat. 
That's because you've messed up your hormones with the wrong way of dieting. So it's quality food that has to go into your body at any given point. So besides this, it gets more and more dangerous. Everyone's looking at weight loss today. You know, when we talk about cancers and people say, how did I get cancer? I dieted, I lost weight. Cancer is also a disease of a lack of nutritional nutrients. When you lack micronutrients, because micronutrients control your DNA, it plays a huge role in your immune system. So people on fat diets are mostly always sick. They have colds and they have coughs and they're popping vitamin C's. Like you should be healthier, right? If you're working out and dieting, you should be healthier. Why are you constantly sick? Because you have a compromised immune system and you can have any disease if your immune system breaks down. Talk about any cancer. You can turn on a bad gene into a cancer. You can downregulate and upregulate genes with a poor immune system, all caused because of the fad way of your living. So while you may lose weight for those three months to look good, I have had patients get cancers six months later and they know the reason. I don't tell them the reason. They say, look, I abused my body. I was nutritionally starved. Your body needs nutrition every second of the day to protect you. Your three month pursuit of quick weight loss, you can derail yourself for a lifetime. Maybe it won't happen this year, maybe it won't happen next year because disease slowly grows in your body. Eventually it is. And that is why we gotta stop looking for shortcuts. I would support shortcuts if they worked, but they don't. Show me a single person who's on an extreme diet and can maintain it once they're off the extreme diet. That person doesn't exist. So don't hide behind extremes. Don't hide behind fancy names like this diet and that diet. What is the right diet for you? What is the right lifestyle for you? Every diet that you get on, is it supporting you nutritionally? Not just weight loss, everything else. We have a lot of people who come and say, hey Luke, you know, I wanna lose weight, I wanna do this, this, this. I said, sorry, first we're gonna fix your diabetes. First we're gonna bring down your CRP levels. Next, we're gonna work on your pancreatic enzymes because you lack them. Then we're gonna talk about weight loss. By then, once we fix that, automatically you're gonna be losing weight. But sorry, we're not gonna treat you for weight loss unless we treat you for this first because that's a bigger concern than your weight loss. Some stay, some leave, and many come back. But the problem is, there cannot be a shortcut when it comes to human health. There is no shortcut in abundance. There is no shortcut in money. There is no shortcut in love. There are no shortcuts. But we are being spoiled by social media, by entertainment, showing us that shortcuts and instant gratification is the way forward. Today, everyone has instant gratification, yet are people happier or sadder? Are people emotionally stronger or emotionally weaker? Instant gratification destroys you at every level. While we all, you know, we all become uh, slaves to it in some way or the other, you can't let that rule your life. If there are certain fundamentals required for you to stay healthy, you gotta do those fundamentals. There are no shortcuts around that. Now, once you're doing the fundamentals, you can find shortcuts. Like for example, if I have 500 ml of water on an empty stomach in the morning, I can stimulate thermogenesis. So I get an, an additional boost to my weight loss. Now that's a shortcut, but I'm still doing the fundamentals. I can't say I'm not gonna do anything, but just have 500 ml of water in the morning. I can't say I'm gonna have Garcinia, Cambogia, and green tea and lose weight. Yes, it can help you to lose weight when the fundamentals are in place. You can't not do the fundamentals and expect green tea to work for you. That's how it works. And I can tell you, we are treating those patients around the world who have messed up their bodies and hormones, messed up their minds by trying to do quick weight loss. It doesn't exist. It took you two to three years to put on all that weight. What makes you think it's gonna go in three months? You can start the process. You can build a faster metabolic rate and you can lose all of that weight, but the right way. People waste time and energy doing different diets and traveling the world and putting themselves into extreme detoxes and different camps. And they come back with the same problems because you haven't addressed the root cause of it. So think about that. Look at your plan today. Is it sustainable? Is it nourishing me? nutritionally? Is it what my body needs, not just to look good, but to survive, to thrive, to live healthy when I'm 10 years older or 15 years older? These are the questions we gotta ask and then take two steps back. If you're gonna lose your friends and partner because you're fat right now and you have that pressure on you, lose them, lose them. That's absolutely fine, but you don't lose your health. You don't lose your emotional value and your self-worth. 
You don't put that undue pressure. No one is putting pressure on anyone to lose weight. All that pressure is your own mind. I'll tell you that. Yeah, in some bad relationships, it is like that. You lose weight, otherwise I'm gonna leave you and all of that stuff. But most people and most women's pressure and men's pressure to lose weight is their own insecurity, their own self-worth. They've attached their self-worth to their appearance. So if their appearance isn't good, their self-worth is down. If their appearance is good, their self-worth is up. You gotta change that. No one has pressure to lose weight. Absolutely no one. You gotta take out the pressure you put on yourself by feeding yourself thoughts that are self-limiting. If someone doesn't like you, big deal. Why are you still with them? They should accept you the way you are. And if it's your fault and you're being lazy and you have bad habits and you're putting on weight, you're gonna pay the price for that. That's your responsibility. In life, everyone has the power of choice, but you also have to realize that you have to have responsibility for the consequences of those choices. That's how it is. No one else is responsible for your life. You made the choice, you made the decision, you own the responsibility for the consequences of your decision. When we know that, then we start looking within. Why am I trying to lose weight? Why am I trying to look good? Why am I trying to do this? Now, what should I do at my own pace to do it the right way? Have a great week, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.